Hey guys, it's Christ169. I'm actually in a strip mall area in Clarksville, Tennessee. Today is Friday at 7.22 see it's, uh, Central Time. I'm here to discuss with you something important. Uh, it's the life of live service games. How long do they have to live and does it actually matter live service games? Helldivers 2 is a live service game. Uh, Halo Infinite, multiplayer is a live service game. Call of Duty Online, live service game. Gears of War Online, they were live service games. And what makes a live service game is mostly games that are live service. Like I mean, like what the, you know, the name says. These games are live. They're active. They're active users, active play people. Battlefield, live service game. Apex Legends, uh, PUBG. Uh, um, Overwatch, Overwatch 2 that's pretty much, you know, having a little issues right now. These games are, are, are considered live service games. And uh, today's topic would be about live service games. Are they dying faster than we expected? You know, a lot of these games are not like the hype. And the hype is Call of Duty. The hype is Apex Legends. The hype is PUBG. First off, PUBG and Apex Legends are both arena type of games. They're open world arena games. They're arenas, they're battle royale, they're different. Call of Duty, Battlefield, and even Hell Divers, totally different genres here, are not open arenas. They're just, you know, you know, um, assimilators. Like Ground War or um, Invasion on Call of Duty and and Conquest mode on Battlefield are ground-based shooters with atmosphere changes especially on battlefield we have a tornado come by or you have rain coming down or you have all these things going on sandstorms especially in helldivers 2. Uh, you have these happening you have this stuff happening you have this stuff going on here you will have all those things on top of that you will have things that happen like this and i think that 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 can be more and less looking at the situation at hand and not being portrayed truthfully if you think about it think about you know a live service game back 10 years ago was online games that was considered not really live service now they are live and live service games are games that are being constantly updated constantly having new skins downloaded and you know, new dlc this stuff is live service. Uh, back in 10, 15 years ago, Call of Duty 4 would not consider live service. Even, even, even though it was online, the campaign was still pretty decent. People played online because they wanted to get with their friends. Now, with the competitive nature of uh, 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 um, esports and the MLGs and <clears throat> like that, you have a lot more people hopping on this bandwagon of live service games. But how about, uh, um, how about single player games? How about games like um, Elder Scrolls? That's single player, but you can play online. It doesn't have a lot of... Uh, um, you don't battle each other. It's more of a PvE. Elder Scrolls and Diablo are more PvEs. It's a person versus environment. Where it's like Helldivers 2 is PvE. <laughs> It's a third-person shooter, where Elder Scrolls is first-person. You can probably go third-person too. I think updates, whatever. Uh, and you're going against, you know, and, and hordes of enemies, your, your people. Now, now Elder Elder Scrolls are a lot. Uh, Elder Scrolls a lot more open base, a lot more paid service, just like World of Warcraft. Uh, your paid service, constantly paying it to to. Download new and uh, new expansions, new areas to explore and play. Helldivers don't have that. Battlefield didn't have that. Call of Duty didn't have that. Even even Apex Legends doesn't have that, or PUBG doesn't have that. And that I know of. So Elder so Elder Scrolls is probably the ultimate in in World in Wow World of Warcraft, and you know are the only two really open world live service games that have been going on for a long time outside of Counter Strike Two. Once again, Counter Strike 2 is a team based shooter that's live service. 
because it's online only. And I think live service is now becoming more and more in depth with online only. That's more live service now. Where back 10, 15 years ago, Elder Scrolls and World of Warcraft was a, pen of me, uh, uh, was a pinnacle of live service. You had to be online content all the time. And that, because you know, you know, if you're offline, the game doesn't work. You probably still probably play World of Warcraft, you know, solo probably. You probably could now by yourself offline if you wanted to, but it's, but not fun without friends, and the interaction is not there. So you have to have that, you know, you have to have friend, you have to have, to, you have to have that friend uh, interaction to play. And um, I think in another game called uh, Call of Arms. Call to Arms is a uh, revolutionary, you know, it's a Civil War first-person shooter that actually uses keyboard and mouse. I played a little bit, you no, know, it went one cup of tea, but it, was, but it was a real fun game. But you are actually a Civil War soldier, and you're really going to fighting in, in these battles. And I think Bull Run and Gettysburg, but you have to get there throughout your your missions. And it's hard because you have to use keyboard and mouse, and you have to use a controller, but mostly keyboard and mouse, uh, to fire a weapon and reload a weapon and do something like that. But it is it's, it, it's open world to an extent. Open world to an extent. Not open world like, oh my god, you know, Diablo or World of Warcraft, but mostly anything like Diablo. Not Diablo, but uh, 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 Elder Scrolls more open world than WoW is. WoW is more linear. But Elder Scrolls does, it does have a pretty good amount of uh, open worldness to it. But it does not mean that if you play Elder Scrolls or WoW that you're just some loser. No, because I think people look at these people who play games like this. I have friends of mine, still to this day, who will take off week vacation every year and play the new WoW expansion. Download, they play it a whole week. Vacation, whole week. You know, and every other vacation they'll go to Disneyland or whatever with the family. But when it comes out, that they're playing it, and that's what they want to do. And, and, and to, me, to me, that's fine. It's certain their, their, their time. They don't want, you know, do they want with it. <clears throat> but what makes a live service game die is the lack of interest. The games come out so much. See, the game retention span nowadays are not like they were back then. You know. And I call Nintendo the prime example of an old school of an old school gamer. They're content one game, playing it, and then they master it and move on. Most kid, most people they don't master games anymore. They play it until, until, until a new hot thing shows up, then they jump off and go to the new hot thing. They might jump back to the old thing when the hot thing's not as good as they thought it was, or or, or, or no, or vice versa. Me, I played Battlefield for over a thousand hours. Oh, well, Mark, you have no life. The point is, half of those 500 hours of that time was spent waiting for the game to actually damn well run. Okay, I bought the game in October 21, uh, 12th. Uh, week, week before it came out, because I'm an idiot. I paid 90 bucks for it, just have a game crash and just laugh at me. So, that being said, though... A thousand hours in the game later on, or about 500, 600 hours later on, because I don't count the other 500, because I was just sitting waiting for the game to run, but the timer does. So, you know, a lot of people spent years playing WoW and Elder Scrolls and, and games like that, and that's fine. You know, and, and, uh, uh, Elder Ring is a game that's not online at all, but has a vast fall of people still playing to this day. And that game can win, you know, game of the year again. I got, that, that, that game can win almost game of the year. I, mean, I think it won last year. I think it did. Elden Ring won win. I think it won last year. They're, they're thinking Hell Divers 2 could be it could be game of the year if they get the damn bugs fixed out and get the player base back up again. It's another thing, though. Hell Divers 2 lost, reportedly, a 90% of, of their fan base. Once again, and uh, um, Elden Ring comes out with new with new expansion or DLC. So you expect that to happen. You expect to have that um, erosion of fan base. Call of Duty has 40, 50,000 players right now playing right now. Well, it's beating other games. No. 
it's eroding to it, it lost about 80 to 90 percent of their player base as well. So you have to understand a lot of people, a lot of people who play these games after six months or so are the hardcore gamers. You and I. The casuals will you know, take the dip in the chip, eat it, hmm, get another chip, eat it. Maybe they like what they see. They'll play for six months. After that, and I'm done with this entree. And you're done with the Hell Divers, and you're done with the Call of Duty, you know, done with the Battlefield been done for a long time. But it still has 13,000 players. It still has life, just not as what it should be. Um, but live service games, guys, are pretty much that way. You can make an you can make an argument in saying the hell the hell divers too, you know, gimped its own, you know, gimped its own uh, progression by putting it on on everything like Steam and not understanding that hundred or right by by eighty countries could not play this game legally. Play on Steam, but couldn't play it legally on PlayStation Network because of what a reason. Now, a network's not allowed in their country because the country says no, we don't want to play your network. Or PSN says no, this is a terrorist country. I'm not saying there's a country, I'm not saying it's terrorist, I'm saying hypothetically there's some evil there, whatever, some kind of government, so whatever. Um, and I can, you know, and it could be that too, and it could be that way as well. Who knows? Who knows what caused the, 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 those countries to get delisted from it? But there's some countries too, as well. That Sony allowed people. Sony allowed Steam to say, "Okay, yeah, you can buy the game, but once you refund it, you can refund anything, anytime you want. You, you refund it anytime you want to. But once you, but once, well, once you refund it, you can't get the game back. You can't buy it. So once you press refund and get it refunded, you cannot get the game back. I think that's very fair. People who are refunded the game and they're out of it." Yeah, it sucks. But you know what? They got the money back, so it's not anything bad. It's a great game. But I think they need to start releasing to more DLC, and they will eventually. They released an update to help get the 60 frames per second on all graphics cards. I have a 3070 that can do it on high. Um, but Elder Roll, uh, Elden, uh, 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 Elder Rings, uh, Elder Ring being different. Um. Hell Hours 2 being different, Call of Duty, Battlefield, Apex Legends, PUBG, and the rest of them are all live service games until they plug the pull plug the, the plug pulled on them. Like that's like having an anthem. Redfall was supposed to be a live service game. But we see what happened to Redfall and the company that created Redfall. They went down the toilet. So that being said, guys, what is in store for Last Search Games? I think I think I think more of the original same. I think more of the same. I think more of the same in one year, out the other, bureaucratic BS selling of these games to us. Trying to get our, no, trying to get our, no, uh, uh, trying to get our dollars away from our hands, long enough. Trying to get our dollars uh, out of our, uh, out of our pocket for them. That's what I think. I think these games are, these games are are, are going to continue to be. <laughs> <laughs> hot messes when they come out because we want games now and I don't care if it's Battlefield, I don't care if it's Call of Duty, I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's Helldivers, I don't care if it's the Barbie's Dreamland Adventure these games are, are, are going to come out and they're going to be buggy as hell okay they're going to be buggy as hell uh, they're, uh, they're going to come out okay um, and they're not going to be you know, workable because we want games now, and I think that's the dangerous thing to have. But it's the same choice. It's the only thing we have left that makes sense. You know what I mean? We do not have a lot of time to wait for games to fold up sharp. It took like what eight years, what it was, seven years to create, or five years to create Hell 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 Divers Two. 
took him a long time to, to work this, and he still had bugs on it. I mean, still has had games crashing. You know, when you're loading screen, you're a pod going down, you just sit there and just float in the air forever. That the crash happened to me last night, too, as well. Uh, people get timed out and kicked out for because what a reason, you know, trying to try and join games. It's causing people to erode from the game. Call of Duty had a bad glitch. Battlefield had a terrible launch. Helldivers 2 was a good game. I think I think what drove Helldivers 2 away from a lot of people was is the fact that the game was extremely hard to get a hold of and play the game. Not hard to get hold of, but hard to get into a server. Get a hold of a server. And when the CEO said, hey guys, stop buying, plans, stop buying the game for a while because our servers can't hold it. People are just are, are can handle it. People are like okay, and now given the whole thing now, with now you have the game been, been updated four or five times. It still has issues, but not really game breaking issues. But some issues, and they add you know the uh, illuminate and other enemies to it. That'd be a lot better. Uh, I think that right there will help improve the game for a little longer, maybe up to a year, maybe a year and a half. Then we'll go from there. But right now, Hell Virus 2 is pretty much the game right now that is becoming the poster child to what really happens uh, when you allow a game to be a hit but also have bugs and issues and also have Sony getting in the way and it's really a sad situation because Hell Divers 2 is a great game I want to, I want to say that enough Hell Divers 2 is a great game the great game is very fun but live service games have the same flaw where they come out and they think well we can do what we want we can charge where we want Hell Divers 2 came out with a uh, Arrowhead came out with a right choice a right pain plan for the game. It's a 40 bucks for the game and you get you, know, you got all these bad passes for free or you can buy premium passes or just you know you know your super credits and that's cool but what EA does is put things behind paywalls and, and, and loot boxes and, and Call of Duty's loot box system and, and even even Apex Legends you know I bought Apex Legends for 30 bucks because I wanted the extra stuff, you know, so, you know, whatever, and that's fine. You know, because I, I never played Apex Legends before, I haven't played it in a long time. So, I haven't played it, it's been out for two, three years, I just now started playing it again. So, I, you know, you know, I wanted to get a little more into it. So, I, I, you know, I, you know, I'll get good weapons and also have an idea what the hell I'm doing. It's a very fun game. It's just, you have to really be communicating with your squad. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing with Apex Legends beats uh, Helldivers is that communication is key. But doesn't mean that you can't have a good time in Helldivers. You can have a great, great time in Helldivers, actually. But does this mean that Blasters games are dead? No. It just means that these companies are going to have to keep, keep going back to the drawing board to find out uh, what they can do to keep their game uh, from going down the uh, uh, um proverbial toilet. Mikhail Dyer 2 is in dire strait of losing everything and dying. And for me and everybody else who, who bought the game digitally on Steam, that's a bad thing. Because, you know, no, 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 Arrowhead you know, authorizes Steam to give everybody massive refunds, but they probably won't. <clears throat> um, it's going to be difficult. Because right now, it's a fun game. But so is Elden Ring. So is Elder Scrolls, I mean. Elder Scrolls, online games. But, come a time eventually where well, these games are going to die out. Elder Scrolls and World of Warcraft are, are probably the, and in, 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 in Counter-Strike 2 are probably the oldest games out there. They've been around for a long time. They have secret formula. It is... We give you expansion packs, you give us money, you can play game longer. We're not going to give you, you no, know, we're not going to hide that behind our paywalls. Here it is, down and dirty, 
you know, you want this game, you get this game for like, say, 50 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever it costs, whatever it is. And we'll give you expansion packs, cost 20, 40 bones per, you know, uh, every six months, every year, you get expansion packs, you can do more of a game. Elder Scroll has gone a little crazy with that. They have a lot more expansion packs now, a lot more DLC, a lot more things going on with it. But it's still a fun experience. You put in two, three hundred hours in that game, and it's still pretty much, you know, a, 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 a minimum effort. Because uh, the game still has more, to, a, a, a lot more to do. Two hundred hours is considered decent in a lot of these games. But a lot, a lot of people put in like eighty hours, and they stop for a while. There's no, 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 no wrong taking breaks. So, I think future guys, I think the future here. Live service games are going to become a lot more competitions to and against single player games. We all seen the we all seen the success of Spider Man and Miles Morales and Spider Man Two and Last of Us and Last of Us Two. We all seen these games hit record high sales because of their single player. Prowess. People like to be in Peter and swinging across the, the, the New York City on the webs. People like being Morales, Miles Morales and swinging across the web. People like to be superheroes. Batman Arkham Knight. A lot of people like being Batman. You know, flying from, from, from top to top. A lot, a lot of people like that kind of games. Myself included. So I have more fun playing Red Dead 2... Uh, Spider-Man, uh, uh, Batman, Morales Morales, Cyberpunk, games that are single-player depth, single-player games that have a lot to bring to the table. <laughs> they have more expansions coming out. Oh, oh, oh they did. Uh, the last one for, uh, the only one they have for um, Cyberpunk is that uh, something snake, what it's called. I can't remember what it's called. I haven't, no, I haven't even played this full, full, full main character yet. Uh, first one. I have so many games I gotta play. But, um, Cyberpunk is a real fun game. But, it's really immersive. You, you, you have to prepare yourself to be immersive in that game. If you don't, you're not gonna get immersive. You, you have to get immersive in these games. Single player games are very immersive. You have to be willing to get into it and be immersive and be okay. This is what I'm gonna be playing for a few hours. And, you know, or an hour or two. And, and it really is fun. I mean... You really feel like you're actually doing this stuff. You're swinging across uh, New York City. Or, or you're blasting, you know, rival gangs and cyberpunk because you're trying to figure out what the hell's going on with Johnny Silverhand and and all their crap. And you're running around and doing, uh, you know, uh, um, Horizon Forbidden West. And, you know, and you're trying to, Arthur, trying to figure out, the, you know, the end of Wild Wild West. And, and, and you know, can you make it on... You know, and out the west is dying. The wild, 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 wild west is dying. And can you make it? You know, in the modern age. You know, it's great stories for, for all the games I've mentioned, and that people want great stories. Like, like you know, Red Dead Two came out years and years ago. The online thing died out quickly, but single player game itself. My, my sister finally bought Red Dead Two, played on Steam. She told me the best game she ever played. I told her, I told her it would be. Told her it's not GTA horses, it's a real life kind of a, of a, you know, of a simulator. We are an outlaw at the very end of the outlaw's life. The old west is dying, the new modern age is taking over, and you literally have to figure out your place in the world. It's a great game to have, great game to play, and I played it and beat it on the Xbox, I'm playing it and I'm gonna beat it on the PC. It takes time, but once you start getting to the story and get really into the meat and potatoes of the story itself, it beats Hell Divers. It beats all these other games into the ground because it's 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 immersive. I think that's why a lot of, a lot of open world games like Hell Divers, game flashers games are trying to be more immersive. Like Hell Divers trying to be more immersive with the with the over top insanity of Super Earth and and you know you know diplomacy and but a lot of people like that kind of Hell Divers 2 atmosphere. But what do you guys think, though? Do you guys think that um, 
live action, live search games are going to be around longer? Or are they going to keep dying quicker because of uh, lack, lack of interest? Comment down below. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.